with Alex Jones and Stephen Quayle. Stephen Quayle, of course, is the author and primer for understanding bioterrorism called Breathe No Evil. Isn't that ironic? First published in 1996. Here's Stephen Quayle. Stephen, how are you? Ah, good evening, George. And we're talking about probably the most important subject that you and I have addressed in the times we've been on coast together as as far as no longer warning. Now it's in the implementation phase. And I think it's important that people understand. You and I were doing a show together, George. I looked up the records back in 2003, 2004, where the head of Porton Down, the British Ministry of Defense, Dr. David Kelly, supposedly committed suicide on the show that we did that night. Remember, I said mm-hmm. he was murdered. Subsequently, some of the great investigators have proven that he's murdered. But what this is getting to is the fact that whenever a virus is uh, dug up from the past, as in the 1918 Spanish flu, it's designed to be basically understood so it can be created into a weapon. And now we have the word uh, unusual being applied to this uh, variation of swine flu, and because it's got components of three different types of uh, DNA strains. So it is my contention right out of the chute that this is a genetically altered bioweapon. And the question is, is it tied in with a much bigger picture? Is this just the first salvo in a, in a very dark and uh, dreadful chapter that's going to be written in the U.S. and world's history? And I think we have, based on what you and I and Alex can put together tonight, we can paint a picture that is so far removed from uh, conspiracy to be in your face just by public documents. For instance, in 1996, Air Force put out a document claiming that by 2009, 30 million people would be dead from influenza. How did they know that? Isn't that interesting? Here's the other artist of the program tonight, Alex Jones, the award-winning documentary filmmaker, political researcher, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, truly at the forefront of alternative media. Alex Jones joining us on Coast to Coast. Hello, Alex. George, thanks for including me on this very important broadcast. Likewise. I do not recall if you two have been together for a full program on this show. Have you, together? You know, I think there was some roundtable. Roundtable, yes. Yes, but no, I don't, I don't think I've ever been on just with Steve, so that's uh, So here we are. Our Stephen, Alex, and uh, here I am. And this will be a roundtable for the next couple hours. Plus, we'll take calls next hour as well. We just heard from Stephen, Alex, who believes that this was concocted in a laboratory and released on us your take well my problem is i'm sitting here with about a hundred and fifty plus documents and reports including the one we broke uh just a month and a half ago at infowars.com about that air force prospectus saying that they thought there would be a massive flu outbreak uh back in 1996 in 2009 so i just have information overload here but i want people to listen to me very very carefully uh because this is so important. This is clearly a designer virus. This is clearly uh, been man-made. Now, is it a mass pandemic? Is it a virus that will kill millions of people? We don't know that. But the way it is uh, swine, which is pig, for those that don't know, human and bird, um, all combined together. I have talked to now six different virologists, five different medical doctors, uh, talked to them, several of them today, and they're all saying that it's 100 to 1 that this is engineered. And then even CNN had a uh, retired top general on today uh, involved uh, in researching bioweapons saying we need to look at this being made in a laboratory. But then on top of that, uh, you have the pieces of it. I mean, it's very rare to have three of them mixing together uh, from three different uh, organisms uh the three right. different animals, Absolutely. then uh, almost every flu, in fact, I can't find an instance of a flu that wasn't generated in the east. That's how it's always worked. There's two different uh, uh, flu seasons in two different hemispheres. And so they're saying this came out of Mexico. This was uh, you know, in some cauldron uh, uh, in Mexico. And then also the flu season is over. So, so not only, I mean, you add all these factors together, all the smart money, uh, and even anybody who can rub two brain cells together, knows this is engineered. Then we find out, according to uh, the BBC and others, that the Mexican government knew about this uh, back on the 18th, and that uh, FEMA knew about it, started doing drills two weeks ago for 
very massive flu pandemic. Suddenly we saw stories in Tennessee, California, and other places about the Army and Marines running checkpoints on highways without even asking people. Uh, then uh, we interviewed... Uh, and then we hear about the FEMA camps. Remember that? Exactly. And then people, quote, debunk those when it's in major newspapers. And in fact, that was my next uh, issue. And when we have time later in the hour, I can get into it. Uh, you know, people keep saying there's no mass graves. Well, we were sent, just like we broke the Mayak report and the big federal report, uh, where it was saying gun owners and, and, and Christians and Ron Paul bumper stickers and veterans are the number one threat and, and basically terrorists. Uh, we received uh, from people in multiple states, including New York, these are posted right now on a story called Plans for Mass Graves Confirmed, Government Surveying Cemetery Readiness for Flu Outbreak, all over the country. Uh, they are going to all the major uh, cemeteries saying, can you get ready to bury hundreds of thousands uh, uh, you know, on your back 40 for a massive flu outbreak? And then emergency managers in Illinois and Indiana, and I called them and talked to them off you know, uh, record and confirmed uh, what was put in the newscaster website and others, that FEMA has come in and said, we want you to harden government buildings, even in small towns, and prepare for millions of dead. And then all over the country, CDC, Centers for Disease Control, plastic coffins being deployed everywhere. And then lastly, you add to that things like the Rocky Mountain News, uh, February 2003, uh, February 11, 2003, uh, in inside Denver, state prepares for bioterrorism. Executive order gives governors additional powers, and they say they did, they did this because the feds told them to, quote, incinerators, mass graves, camps, and during top-off and during uh, these tabletop exercises, dark winter and other drills they've done, they admittedly trained to put people in sports stadiums and lock down cities. So, then we look at Prince Philip and Ted Turner and the U.N. and the Biological Diversity Assessment 1996 saying they want to, quote, reduce the world population by at least 80 percent. And they said that a airborne super flu uh, that was transgenetic with all these different species would be the perfect way to do it. And that we need to have cut the population of England by half, Australia by half, U.S. by half. They're now announcing one-child policies they want to push. That's what the green carbon footprint and carbon tax is all about. So remember, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that this is going to be a mega pandemic. No, because we don't, we don't know that. But what we can say is it's very unusual that these mixes, as you just pointed out, Alex, will be put together and released on the public naturally. It doesn't happen like that. And then it starts in Mexico, not in the East as it always does. But, but And as you said, this isn't the flu season. This isn't the flu season, and it's coming out of Mexico, not Asia, and then it's clearly engineered. So, so what I'm saying is, is this a beta test? Well, now the mainstream media, the governments are saying, the World Health Organization is saying, it may mutate into something deadly. They're saying, just like the 1918 flu, Spanish flu that killed at least 40 million people, that was respiratory and hit 18 to 30-year-old healthy males and females, the most virile. That's why so many mainline scientists and virologists are so concerned. Well, and Alex, as Stephen has reported over the years, you too and, and on this program, Stephen, how many microbiologists do we have left to fight this? There's, well, there's 80 of them, of them dead, at least. More yeah. than, yeah. And, and most of them that could have thought this, and that would have been the telltale investigators, have been systematically liquidated, with David Kelly being the foremost. Now, I think what people need to understand is this, that even with Baxter Pharmaceuticals and those companies that could uh, prepare a vaccine, which normally takes from 9 to 12 months. Now, that's the same company that accidentally sent this virus, a, a virus out to various countries, right? 18 different countries. Now, you know, George, we've been doing this way too long, and Alex and I and you have got a cynicism based on investigation. I think that's uh, well merited. The fact is, is that I am not going to trust any announcements from uh, the government that they have a vaccine for this, because number one, in, in developing a bioweapon, this is something that most people need to understand. When any government develops a bioweapon, ours, China, Russia, whoever, they always uh, develop the vaccine, or if it's a chemical weapon, they develop the antidote. The thing that I think is really...